Hi, I'm Colin. And I'm James. And welcome to Let's Talk Retro. Hello. Well, Colin has invited me over because he's got something to show me and it is one of these. Now, Colin, can you explain what this is and what it does? Yeah, well, this is something I think is actually pretty cool. And this is called a Super Game Pi. And this is the brainchild of a guy called Rob from the Netherlands or from Holland. And uh, Rob, what he's decided to do is to basically make an all-in-one emulation sort of uh, console. And so he's taken a Raspberry Pi microcomputer and he's added to it uh, a bit of software called Emulation Station. Okay. And that's like a front end for a lot of different emulators and uh, so you can play your games on it basically. Oh, brilliant. And he's um, then put this into a 3D printed case, which I think looks pretty cool. He's yeah, designed that himself. And he's added an on-off switch, which you don't normally get on a Raspberry Pi. You don't normally have an on-off switch, so that's uh, a nice little feature. And uh, yeah, so that's basically what he's done to make this Super Game Pi. Right. So Colin, um, I don't have a Raspberry Pi. I've never owned one. I know you've had the first version of the Pi. Um, yeah, can you give us a rundown on, on what, yeah. what it features? So uh, first, I should say it's a Super uh, a Raspberry Pi Two. Sorry, in some okay. And um, yeah, I'll give you that a little tour all the way around it. And uh, so first of all, the first thing I like about it is the 3D printing case. It's got first edition on the front there, which is quite nice. So for people that have uh, bought one early, you get first edition. Oh, okay. I presume perhaps when he does a sort of next lot, it'd be either second edition or just mm. say Super Game Pi on there or something like that. And then also on the front, you've got just your on-off switch. Uh, like I say, you don't normally get those on the Raspberry Pi, so that's a nice, nice added feature. Uh, and then around this side, you've just got a continuation of the stripes from the front, so nothing, okay. nothing going on there. But then if we go around to the back, you've got your micro USB port there, and uh, that's obviously for your power. Okay. So that's, a, oh, yeah, that's, where, yeah. that's where you power it. You get those and everything that, that yeah. you use these. Um, and then you've got your HDMI out, so you put your HDMI cable in there to go to your TV. Brilliant. There's um, a little audio out for like, headphones and uh, things like that. Then there's some vents, so it's nice to have a bit of ventilation. Does it get hot then, the pipe? Yeah, it can do, a little bit. Not over hot, but yeah. Yeah, it's nice just to have a little bit yeah. of ventilation just to help out. And then finally on this side, you've got like your, your LAN port for your, for your internet connection if you're going to wire connect it. Mm. And then four USB ports. Brilliant. Uh, so plenty of USB ports. Yeah. So on the first version, you only got two, but on the Raspberry Pi T, you got four. So yeah, that's great. That's, that's quite nice. You never so, have enough USB no. ports. And there's not much going on the bottom, just some screws that are oh, so holds it all, together, all yeah. together. Yeah, so that's basically a tour of the Super Game Pi. So, um, Colin, looking at the actual design of the 3D printed case, the um, graphics look quite familiar. Yeah, the uh, the logo, the, the logo um, Super Game Pi, and uh, the name Super Game Pi obviously sounds familiar because there was a Super Game Boy, ah, which course, was yeah. uh, an add-on for the SNES where you could play uh, Game Boy games on the SNES using the Super Game Boy. And Rob's a big fan of the Super Game Boy, so that's why he's used Brilliant. that for his... Why not? Yeah, for his, the, the idea for the name sort of thing, so that's, that's cool. Um, yeah, and I basically I came across this um, on Instagram. Uh, I think you probably do that. I told you that about that at the time. Um, Rob started posting lots of pictures of this, and I was like, wow, that looks cool. Yeah. You know me, I like the, the Raspberry Pi, I like gaming and uh, emulation and stuff. So I was, I, was, I was right on this from the start and really wanted to back his project, so I bought one. So we advertised it on Instagram yeah, well, first and then of all, took pre-orders. Yeah, well, yeah, first of all, he's got a website. We'll put the website up, dress up along here, I can't actually remember. Okay. We'll put it up along there and it'll be in the uh, the, the, the uh, description or the, the, of, the, of the video sort of thing. Um, but yeah, he, he started basically just started probably that little teaser thing. He started putting these on Instagram and I was thinking, is this guy selling this or is yeah. he just making it for himself? Um, so I think maybe to begin with, it started off just as a project for himself and then people were interested. And uh, he decided to go ahead and do it. And it's got a website where you can buy it from there. And uh, that's, uh, that's all good. Um, yeah. Good stuff. Does it come in other colours or is it just... Is that just for people who pre-order? Yeah, no, you, no. You, you, you get a choice. He gave me a choice. He said, what colour do I want? I said, I'd like orange. I thought the orange looked cool. I think he does some in red and black as well. Oh. Maybe other colours. But I think it's red and black. So they're the other main colours. So, Colin, um, can you show us how you set one of these up? Yeah, I'll show you. I've got some VT ready. And uh, we'll show that to you now. So, run VT. So, to get your Super Game Pi all connected up isn't too hard. 
the first thing you obviously want to do is get some power to the unit. So uh, Rob supplies it with a power adapter. Uh, mine, unfortunately, come with a European model, uh, but I'm not too worried about that. I can use a little adapter to get around that here in the UK. Or as long as this is a micro USB 5 volt power adapter, you're in business. So you rather obviously plug your power supply into the mains and take the micro USB end and then you plug that into the micro USB socket on the back of the Super Game Pi like so. And then next you need to get a HDMI cable which you plug into your TV and then the other end you obviously plug into the HDMI out socket on the back of the Super Game Pi. So nothing too hard so far. Next at this point it's a good idea to grab yourself a USB wired controller. Um, any controller will do more or less but um, as you can see I prefer the original Xbox 360 controller. Uh, it's just my preferred controller of choice. And you just want to take your controller and plug it into any one of the four USB sockets on the side of the uh, Super Game Pi. So now we've got everything plugged in it's time to switch on. And uh, switching on for the very first time and you notice it's got a really nice green LED light on the uh, on-off switch and the whole thing looks really cool. So now we've pressed the on button hopefully it's going to boot up and uh, oh yeah oh yeah it's found a nice Super Game Pi splash screen there. The Raspberry Pi powered retro emulator. Oh and yes this is a bit more uh, Familiar, the Emulation Station splash screen. If you've used Emulation Station, you'll be familiar with that. And now we come to the welcome screen. So as you can see, it says one gamepad detected. That's good news. And it says hold A button on your device to configure it. So if we press A, you should see it flash up Xbox 360 controller. There you go. So on this screen is where we configure our gamepad. And it's not too hard. You just got to press the buttons in the right order it asks for. Just take your time and you can't go wrong, really. Um, although saying that, I occasionally have problems with the Xbox 360 trigger buttons. When I do them, they mess up sometimes. We'll see how we get on. And uh, if you make a mistake, you can always go in the settings and change it later. So if we press up on the D-pad, down on the D-pad, left on the D-pad, right on the D-pad. Now we need to press the start button, then the select button, the A button, B button, X button. Y button and now left bottom this is the trigger this is where I have problems so I'm going to press it and I bet it skips to the top left yeah it has well, I'll sort that out later so um, just to save time so what we've got to do now is press the left bumper button and then the right bumper button and then the left thumbstick now this left thumbstick in so you actually click it in and then the right thumbstick click that in then it's left thumbstick up left thumbstick down left thumbstick left, left thumbstick right, and now it's onto the right one, so it's right up, right down, right left, and right right, and that's the controller all configured. And we just press A on OK. So that should be our gamepad configured correctly. Uh, might just have to check the trigger buttons, because they had a problem with those, but don't use them too often in retro games anyway. And as you can see, we're now in the front end of Emulation Station, and I'm just going through all the systems, just using right on the D-pad. And as I'm just running through these systems, guys, I'd just like to remind you that to keep things legal, to have a ROM or a backup of a game, which you're obviously going to be using on this system, that you should have a physical copy. So you should have actually the cartridge um, in your collection to be able to use it and keep things legal. As you can see, most retro systems are available on here, and I think it can do over 41 altogether. Okay, so that was great. We saw how to set that up. I thought it was pretty easy. Yeah, um, it's a very easy thing to do. Brilliant, that's what you want. You don't want to be spending your time messing about trying to set something up that's too difficult and you give up. No. What happens, so if you want to put some more games on? Ah, well, I've also got a bit of a video to show you how to do that, so should we have a look at that? Yeah, let's watch it. Yeah. So you want to add some more games or ROMs to your Super Game Pi, and this is how you do it. So first of all, you want to grab yourself a USB stick, 
and it can be any one, it doesn't have to be an XL one like this, but the reason I'm using this one is my number one tip is that it um, actually flashes when it's actually working, when it's doing something. It's got a little LED in it that flashes and uh, I'll show you why that's quite important in a minute. So you want to take your memory stick and put it in your PC and when it shows up on your PC, double click on it and in the root folder or the root directory of this uh, memory stick you want to put a new folder and you want to call that RetroPie and that's actually with an E, in the, e on the end Raspberry Pi is often spelled with just PI, this has actually got an E on the end so once you've done that, eject your USB stick and then you want to take your USB stick and plug it into any of the USB sockets on your Super Game Pi and then this is the bit where I, was important, where I say it's important to have a USB stick that flashes because you can see it's actually doing something if it wasn't flashing away like that and you didn't have that facility you'd be just sort of sat there wondering whether it's actually working but what Emulation Station is doing is now putting folders into the Raspberry Pi folder that you just made for all of these systems that it actually supports and uh, now it's stopped flashing it's safe to take it out of the uh, Super Game Pi so now we're back on the PC and we've plugged in the USB stick and we're back at the RetroPie folder we made and you can notice it's got a configs folder and a ROMs folder and in the ROMs folder now there are the folders that were generated by Emulation Station when we plugged in the USB stick for all the different systems that it supports and as you can see there's quite a few. Now as you can see on the left I've still got the ROMs folder open from the USB stick and on the right here I've got another folder which has got some Mega Drive ROMs in, this is based on my computer. Now remember you've got to own these uh, actually as the cartridges, the proper games to be able to use these ROMs or these backups and what we're going to do is just going to click on the Mega Drive folder and then I'm going to select these Mega Drive ROMs and then just drag and drop them across into the Mega Drive folder on your USB stick. Now obviously I'm just doing a few ROMs here to save time but if you wanted to you could populate all the different folders for all the different ROMs and games for the systems that you want to use. But anyway now we've got those Mega Drive ROMs onto the USB stick we're going to eject it from the computer once again and plug it into the Super Game Pi in one of the USB slots on the side and again you'll see it flashing away which means it's moving the ROMs across and onto the emulation station system and uh, once it stops flashing, obviously it'll take a lot longer if you've got more ROMs on there than just the four you know it's safe to uh, take out the USB stick so back on the Super Game Pi, if we navigate to the Mega Drive uh, folder you will see that there's three games in there, these three games are already on my system and the new games, the four new games we just transferred over aren't showing up yet and uh, to get them to show up all we have to do is reset the system all we have to do to reset is uh, press the on off button for less than three seconds and uh, you can see now it says it's uh, rebooting and uh, so we just go through the system of the uh, Super Game Pi splash screen coming up followed by the emulation station splash screen And then when it's uh, booted back up into Emulation Station, you just want to go through to obviously our Mega Drive folder and take a look inside and hopefully yes, as you can see, the extra games that we've uh, added, Road Rush, Sensible Soccer, Sonic the Hedgehog and Street Racer are all uh, present in the uh, Mega Drive section. Just realised I haven't actually showed you anything running on this thing yet, so uh, let's just boot up uh, the old uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and uh, take a look. And then when you're ready to quit back out, just press start and select and it takes you back to the emulation station menu where you were. Okay, that's great. We've seen how you put some extra games on, and I've noticed on some of the games that you've put on, some of the um, the uh, the artwork was missing. So, is there a way of adding 
artwork, do you have to download pictures or save them on the yeah. SD card on the uh, USB stick or? Yeah, there's the um, metadata. You can actually do that from inside emulation okay. station, and it's done by a process called scraping. And uh, I'll show you how to do some scraping now. So before you can scrape uh, for the metadata for all your ROMs, you need to get your Super Game Pi online because obviously it uses the internet to bring in all that sort of information. And uh, so obviously the easiest way is just to plug an Ethernet cable into the Ethernet port on the Super Game Pi, and the other end obviously goes into your router and you're online. But failing that, you can do it wirelessly by using a wireless dongle. There are several dongles that are available that work with the Raspberry Pi. This funky one's actually by the Raspberry Pi organization. And uh, the one I usually use though is this one I picked up from the Pi Hut. You can probably use that for about a fiver. So if you've got yourself a dongle, what you want to do is plug it into a USB port on the Super Game Pi and then go to the RetroPi settings uh, menu and then go down to configure Wi Fi. So once you've selected configure Wi-Fi, this screen should pop up in a minute and uh, you'll see up in the top left hand corner of that grey square it just says configure Wi-Fi, there's no current IP address or anything. So you want to click on connect to Wi-Fi and then choose your router, mine's called Magic, so it's the first one on there. And then enter in your router's password. Then uh, just select OK and it goes back to the original screen we had with the grey square but you can see in the top left hand corner now it's got an IP address and it also says magic so you can see that we are online so now we're online we are ready to start scraping and I've got a couple of Super Nintendo games that I've put on that we need to scrape for the metadata for so I'm going to show you an example of how to do it using those. So if we go into the Super Nintendo section, so we've got three games that are already on there, and I've also added Rock and Roll Racing and Super Mario Kart, which don't have any information. The other games are already on there, and they've got the information. So to scrape for just one game uh, as metadata on its own, you go to that game, so we'll go Rock and Roll Racing, and press the Select button to bring up the Options menu, and go down to edit this game's metadata and then once we're on this you see there's no metadata actually there so you go down to the bottom to scrape and click on that and it automatically brings up rock and roll racing straight away uh, you see it's also brought a chuck rock and a few others and sometimes it brings up the wrong the wrong one so you have to select which one you want so we've selected rock and roll racing by pressing a and it says working and now you can see it's brought in the metadata for that game so I'm just going to cancel that because I'm going to show you how to scrape for more than one at a time. So if you press the start button this time instead of select, and it brings up the main menu and then go to scraper. And you have a few options here. You have scrape from. Now I always use, always use the game database. So I find that works. I find the archive doesn't work. So I always go and use the games database. And you can have ratings on. Um, always have that on. Doesn't worry me. And then so you go to scrape now. And then I only want to scrape for the missing pictures, I want to scrape for everything, so I'll leave on only missing. Uh, you can scrape for all games if you want. Um, and then you can select, you can go from some other systems, you can do all the systems, or you can just do one system. So we're just going to do the ones to make it quicker. So I go down to the bottom, the ones with the X's in the bottom selected. So I'm going to do select none, and then go back up to the Super Nintendo. And then come out of that, you see we've just got the one, one system selected. Um, use a size of conflicts on that on and so you just start scraping so again for straight away it's brought up rock and roll racing we know that's correct so we just press a to select that and then it should start now looking for uh, in any minute now for the super mario kart see it's gone to that two or two scraping for super mario kart now so just gotta wait for it to find the information on that Hopefully you should be popping up any minute now, he says. Oh, yep, here we are. So you've got Super Mario Kart. There's also Super Mario Kart Pro Edition and Super Mario Kart R. So I'm just going to choose a Super Mario Kart one and press A on that. And it says working. And that says two games successfully scraped. And if we go back to the folder and have a look. 
And you see we've got the rock and roll race and all its information as well as Super Mario Kart and all the others that are already there. So that's all there is to scraping. I love how easy it is to get the artwork for the games. That is brilliant. So um, you've had it for a little while, the Super Pi. Um, what do you think of it? Um, yeah, I, I, I really love it. I think it's really good. It's, uh, I mean, the first thing I've seen it when I've seen it on Instagram, I thought, yeah, that looks cool. I uh, wasn't disappointed when I got it and seen it in the flesh. Um, I love the on-off button. That's a great feature, I say, because on the Raspberry Pi, you know, you either have to just pull the electric out ah. or turn it off and on off with a plug. If you keep putting it out, obviously, out of the socket all the time, mm. it's going to wear the socket. I know they're normally pretty sturdy, but eventually it's going to wear. So the, the advantage of having the on-off switch is good. And the way it lights up looks really cool. Um, it's almost sort of like a, an Xboxy sort of style to it. Isn't it? The original a lot Xbox of thought style. has gone into the design of the case. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I love the logo. Um, and, and the whole thing actually works really well. Once you, I mean, I know I mean, we showed you how to set it up and how to add ROMs and that. I mean, I'm a little bit, I have a little bit of experience because I've played around with uh, Raspberry Pis in the past and that, you know. And, but um, it's not hard to set up, and you know, it's you could, you could, you could obviously buy a Raspberry Pi and set it all up yourself, sort of thing. But I think this just ties it all together. Yeah, makes it's it a good look kit. like a, makes it look like a console, mm. and. Uh, you know, it's just just say it just brings it all in together rather than having just to have a just Raspberry Pi on its own, just looking like a Raspberry Pi. You know, think of the hours worth of games you can now just put your telly on, fire that up, and away you go. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I think it's great. I think it's well worth getting if you can afford to get yourself one. I think it costs it's about a hundred pounds with shipping. You know, so don't think that's too bad. You know, Raspberry Pi is thirty quid, and then all the other bits and pieces mm. that you add on. Probably all start mounting up, and uh, I don't know how much it costs to print a 3D case. Mm. Can't be cheap, I wouldn't have thought. Mm. So uh, yeah, I think I think Rob's done a really good job, and obviously you know he wants to make a little bit of money out of it for himself. He doesn't want to do it just for just for free for everyone, does he? Yeah, you know? yeah. So everyone wants to make a bit of bit, bit of money, and I don't think he's he's gone over the top. I think he's just making enough. He just it's a fair price, really. That's what I think. So. Yeah, so uh, if you want to check out, don't forget, I'll put the uh, website address across the screen again now. So if you want to um, get yourself one of these, get in touch with Rob. He's a really friendly guy, uh, answers all your questions. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so that's the Super Game Pie. So that's our little review and setup video for the Super Game Pie. I hope you guys all enjoyed that and uh, think it has been a worthwhile video. But... Uh, that's it until next time, basically. So what they got to do, James? Yeah, keep it retro, everyone. Yeah, keep it retro. We'll see you soon. Right, um, what are we going to play then? F-Zero? Yeah, let's get this thing set up. Brilliant. Really? Give some F-Zero a go, shall we? Yeah, that's One of my favourite games. Well, yeah, let's go. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with all our latest videos.